We are in the remote region of southern Chile, just outside the town of Villa O'Higgins. Having completed the Carretera Austral Road, our new mission is to attempt to cross into Argentina via the most remote border crossing by vehicle in Patagonia. Well, we were planning on camping here tonight, but we've been here officially 20 minutes. We actually ran into our guy, Dan. He was out here collecting firewood, small town, right? Uh, and he stopped in, we talked for a second, kind of got some basic info. He's gonna go into town, he's gonna shower up. We're gonna go back into town uh, and probably reprovision with a little bit of things, just a few things, and then head up towards the border. Uh, apparently there is a storm coming, it's a few days away, but we want to make sure that we're ahead of it. So we're not going to camp here. So long story short, we're leaving as soon as we got here. So let's roll. Expedition Overland is proudly presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. And in part by Max Tracks. Take the easy way out. Magpul. Hard goods and apparel. Warn. Go prepared. Icon Vehicle Dynamics. Equipped Expedition Outfitters. CBI Off-Road Fabrication. Xventure Trailers and in association with Toyota. Let's go places. <laughs> Morale is through the roof. We have been researching and planning for this crossing over the last year, and tomorrow is the day. We provision up for a five-day push into the backcountry of Patagonia. We meet up with Dan again, to get the very latest intel on the river's flow levels. We'll have to cross a series of river channels to reach the Argentine border station and enter into Argentina. The biggest unknown factor is the severity of an incoming spring storm estimated to reach the area in two days. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, really appreciate it. Guys, if it So we landed here in Villa O'Higgins. Wonderful place, this town is awesome really vibrant, people are really friendly. So we rolled into town and kind of just took our chance and checked out this, uh, like a hostel essentially. And they're gonna let us just camp out in the parking lot, which is a great option. And the bonus is they're gonna let us use the kitchen inside and we'll cook our meal inside the kitchen, out of the wind and out of the flies and then come back out here and climb up on our rooftop tents. The pass is looking totally doable tomorrow. Friday's getting a little iffy because of a, a storm system coming in. So we wanna be up and over the pass tomorrow. This will be a nice reprieve. Well, Get out of the wind, cook inside. Tonight's menu, uh, we're gonna be doing steak. So, yay for steak. Unlike the other night when I thought it was steak, but it was really pork. One thing I really have to say is gonna hand it to old Stevie Boy. He's been crushing it with the meals. Oh, my insides. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> it's so warm. Sometimes the work never stops. The video crew, although it may seem glamorous, you start in the morning and you go until late night. It's not all, not all roses, roses and fairy tales. Our morning is kicked off with Kurt briefing us on the colorful history of the border, its road, or lack thereof, and the challenges ahead. Big picture here, we're right here in O'Higgins. We're gonna come up to the Paso Rio Meyer. But as Daniel yesterday, our local intel told us, that's what they call the uh, call the Krishna Road, which is a road that the government paid for. They paid a contractor, but it actually never got, it never got built. It was kind of a, a scam. And not a big deal, because it's just a big wide open valley other than crossing this river right here. And it's really not a single river. It's a whole bunch of little streams and tributaries. We're going at the perfect time. By October, 
you know, even later as things start to warm up in this, the summer down here, the river gets too high, so you couldn't cross that. But we do have to cross, it's called the Rio uh, Carrera. So we're gonna cross that one. Jeff's volunteered, I'd be happy to get some sandals on, some shorts, it's gonna be cold water. All yeah, through the bath. Is. We're all gonna get a bath. So we'll have to walk through it first to make sure it's uh, it's good to go. Awesome. Well, we'll find out what's up there. Yeah, <laughs> let's go do it. First step is gonna be exit Chile. We have had our tent put down faster than we have to date <laughs> this morning. Everyone's on point. Uh, so I'm putting an extra layer of grease on all the vehicles, just making sure that everything's protected from the water as much as can be. So just doing some simple stuff of cleaning air filters, tightening up lug nuts, that kind of deal. Just so we're trail ready. Can't be too hopeful just yet. All things considered, it does look good, which is good. Hopefully, it's a good adventure. Let's go. It's a two hour drive to the end of the road. Our exit from Chile. Just everybody uh, pull in and we'll check through. I will have to see if they do immigrations or customs first. They could theoretically kind of do both, but they're going to stamp our passport out of Chile. And uh, then we'll get, probably get a vehicle inspection, at least just to do this, settle the uh, importation of the vehicles. So from there, it's crossing that big river valley you can see out there off of our 10 o'clock. Yeah, I have a good feeling about this. I think it's going to be a good stop. I do too. Yeah. Super easy. Come on. Alright, grab your goodies and we'll head on in. The border crossing is painfully slow. We've been sitting here for an hour. It's been a while. At it's... least an hour. They've they they got us all checked in. We got our books back. Then they took our passports and I, I think they're they're like on a sat phone calling all of our passports in or something. I don't know. But we're in like the most remote place. Five cars on average a year go through this border <laughs> pass. Yeah. So that just goes to show how remote this place is. Uh, and then they also specified there's only five cars that come in here. And if you cross this border, we cannot help you. They, mm -hmm. He took Kurt out onto the hill. And he was pointing out all this stuff, and you could just tell by his his body language that he's like, once you go there, if you get stuck, if you get help, I can't help you. It has to be Chile that helps you, or excuse me, Argentina that helps you. So we're in the middle of nowhere right now. As remote as we've ever been, especially doing what we're about to do. This is no joke. So they're yeah see so they're having the Los Santos so they're having a problem with the computer system, so no no paso. Uh, I, I don't, no se puede. Okay, so the paperwork isn't going to go, so we just run the risk of a problem. Okay. So can we wait and let them try? Try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to go in there without the paperwork, because then no. you run the risk. Of getting, what'll happen is you get to the next. Uh, and then the chili border, back. and yeah. they're like, no, you're still in here. You know, we never got your paperwork. Another hour passes, and after a second inspection, the soldiers finally hand us the completed paperwork, allowing us to cross into no man's land between Chile and Argentina. All right, how's everybody feeling? We ready to head on in there and look at the first little water? We are ready, x is ready. Okay, Samson's up. So taking a right, right here through the gate. Yes, sir, that's officially it. Here we go, into Argentina. Done and done. You just want us to progress out here to this flat spot. I can see the road out there. Yeah, we'll go to the road out on the grassy area. Let's just uh, crawl it, take our time getting there. That sounds good. We just 
drove through the border station and now we're down in this riverbed and Kurt has a general idea of where the road goes but we're not entirely sure the best route so Kurt and Jeff are out with their sandals looking around uh, to see the best way and so we just got the trucks stopped here we're kind of waiting for them and and uh, see what uh, news they bring back. For right now we're not really too concerned about the depth of the water it's more the banks and all the silt because I mean this is all glacial runoff right yeah. so yeah. a lot of silt's coming down here. Get into a cut bank situation. Yeah. You can be able to get out the other side. And you can always get into a river. Yeah. And these are always get out. Just little tributaries. Until we get to the, our main crossing up there, water is really not the issue. Yeah. It's all the, the soil. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, trucks are ready to go. It's just our brains. That's killer right now. Yeah. That's right. All right. X ray's up. Roof feels up. Should we go ahead and put her in four low? No, I will. I'd get her in four low. This no man's land is roughly seven miles long as the crow flies, with the river channel system in between. We are technically not in Chile or Argentina at this time, so in reality, no country would have to help us if we need assistance medically or otherwise. As far as we know, only the local farmers use this area, and any trails are mostly meant for them, not people crossing the border. All right, so we're launching our first drone search. So it's cool, I'm just looking looking left here, but the road out to the right here is the one we think we can take instead of the one, instead of going through all the little tributaries here. Okay. We are here at just the right time, before the spring rains and winter snow melt, still held in the higher mountains, flood the river valley. With such heavy runoff, the river channels change almost yearly. So we are using the latest satellite images available, but getting your eyes on the current river channels is our first priority. With the water levels as low as they are, the river seems like the most prudent option for the vehicles. It also seems like we can get out of the river in several spots if the river's risk overtakes the mud option. All right, so Kurt and I are making sure we've got plenty of recovery gear on our lead vehicle here that's gonna test everything out. So just putting a solid point on the back, which we have in our bumper, but this is center on the vehicle. Uh, so it'll pull a little, a little more even if we need it. We've got the Factor 55 hitch link. We'll put our worn shack on here. Yeah. If it's knee deep or something he's stuck, oh well, we'll probably get Mack tracks and try and get him to go forward. But if it's you know up to a door taking on water, we're gonna chuck that strap out. Vehicle two and three can't stack up on each other. Stagger. They gotta be ready to grab him and pull him. Back. Yeah, pull him back in. We're taking our time here on these river crossings. It's really, really important that we scout everything out. We take extra precaution because if we have any breakdown out here, we have any failure. We on our own for recovery efforts. It looks pretty low. We'll get out and test it, of course. You film that one, Jeff. Yeah, I think that looks really good. It's uh, looks like there's you can actually see rocks from here. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's we're do that. Cross right here, a little bit of a 45. We're gonna aim on our side of that little uh, swampy thing. Kurt and Jeff find a short dry section of Upper Bank Road to move around the deep channel. We're coming up against three pretty wide sections and they're, not only that, you have to cross it just to get to a bar, a sandbar, a gravel bar, and then cross the same river again and again just to make it through the section. But there is a two track behind us here that has had some use, could be from the guys that have crossed it in the, in the, the past uh, week. There were three vehicles that came across about a week ago. They were some of the first of the season too. So we're like maybe the second group and we're going the opposite direction. It's going to come up and you'll see the road plain as day, that little two track. I'm going to start walking down the two track guys and just give it a quick peek. Out Jeff, you got a little crossed up section, it's a little, little swampy, shouldn't be too bad. 
just to cross through exactly the way you're doing it. And erosion has changed things. It just shows how old that section of road is because it just disappears into a big swamp of water. And that is deep water over there. That's got to be four feet deep. Look at that. Huh. I don't know what it means. It's an arrow on the ground. It's pointed exactly in between the two directions we can go. This one I can see gets through the water probably pretty easily. Uh, this one right here, less so. So I'm, I'm just gonna give them both a quick peek and we'll figure it out. Got a <laughs> marker on it. Awesome, all right, we'll head up towards you. Marked at this crossing versus the other one, so we're gonna give this one a try. It's got a pretty good bottom and our big one is still yet to come. We're still a ways out on the big river valley. This river in front of us should be the Carrera and the major Myers down that way. The main river channel is much further north and west than our imagers showed. They showed it still kind of quite a ways down this way. So where we had intended to cut up the valley is still quite deep river. But what we've noticed is some sticks with that same uh, marking material, the ribbon material. So we're gonna give this crossing a look because it seems somebody did it right here. It's got a good rock bottom. Gonna have to hit that with a little gusto upstream because even with the trailer it's gonna really want to push it sideways fill it out yeah just it's got a rocky bottom let's just fill it out and we'll have a radio and if we say a four just drop it reverse and get out of it okay. let's go let's go jeff you got this break a leg how's it going jeff having fun having a blast time of my life this kind of stuff is just a whole different kind of fun it's really exciting but it's a little intimidating at the same time there's some definitely deep spots and the river is moving pretty quick. Big thing man is the speed but not like a bow wave flow into the water that you get everything wet, right? All good Jeffy, you're looking golden brother. Good work. Good work. Go ahead and just cut over to the left and uh, get over there by that stick and we'll set you up as a recovery guy. Sounds good. That was solid all the way across. That felt really good. Our confidence spikes and we get aggressive with a handful of remaining crossings. We are crossing water after water after water. I'm going to start looking for a place to shut down for the night. We had a great day. All the vehicles are dry, the carpet's dry, everything's running on its own power. So that's a, that's all good news right there. Yeah, good job everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one thing to keep in mind guys, we've got that late start out of the border. We've been fighting our way through these crossings. The Argentine side border is most likely going to be closed already. So we're probably going to need to shut it down in no man's land over here and pick it back up in the morning. Now we can decide how far we push it until we shut it down. But at some point, we're not going to be able to get into Argentina legally without uh, passport stamps entering the vehicle. We climb out of the river bottom to find higher ground and make camp. Today was one for the books. So I can do sausage. Oh. Like. <laughs> There's rabbits everywhere. Sharp, sharp teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so I think tonight should be the redeeming night for a bonfire. The 
warmth of the fire pushes out the evening chill and brings about the end of the day. Today's collective effort has bonded us as a small team more than ever. And more than ever, we are ready for whatever comes next. These rocks will move by hands I've seen. Morning in the Shire has a bunch of coffee. Cause we're in the Shire, it's so delicious. Drinking coffee in the Shire. Proto Baggins is our friend, and Gandalf is too. That was meat. That was meat, meat. What's that stay in there? Swazi. Camping. Oh, that's cool. Cool. Yeah. Remember when we were camping there? I do. I do remember that. Stress has come down because this was on our minds for a long time. Since we were flying down here, we were going to go all the way to the bottom and see if we could cross this. It turned out to be really, you know, straightforward for us. Thank goodness. So now I think everyone's just going, oh, okay, we're through. Um, that That's good. And at the same time, you have to be aware of that happening because when the stress is up, everyone's like thinking harder, thinking faster, and then as soon as that stress comes down, you hit kind of a low point and people can turn their heads off for a little while. We just have to make sure that as we go forward here, get into Argentina, that uh, we have our heads on straight. So this morning we did a, a kind of a quick reset, made sure all of our trucks are good to go. We're gonna go through one more border and that will help us, I think, just mentally get ready to go again. I mean, we're excited for Argentina. What's coming up is the coolest stuff that, I mean, it's the biggest mountains, the classic Patagonia stuff. All right, here we go, we're rolling. We have only a few miles to go before we reach the Argentine border station. It's a wet, muddy trail, putting our Grabber X3s to work. An amused local rancher rides up to see what alien vehicles are traversing his land. He is the first Argentine gentleman that we have come across. A jolly man who has been working this ranch land for more than 30 years. Argentina so far is very welcoming. The drivers remember your books. We have the two processes here. One's going to be immigration for all six of the team. And then the next process, and they may do it before or after, hard to say, is going to be canceling the vehicles. Uh, or sorry, entering the vehicles into Argentina and getting our tourist visa for the vehicles, essentially the temporary vehicle import. It is interesting how their borders are together. I mean, I get logistically, you got a river, big river valley between them, but it's kind of one of the first that we've run across that you have a, this 10 oh, mile gap, you know, or whatever it was, uh, six, seven miles here. anyway, between the actual border stations. Yeah, kind of interesting. I guess yeah, Bolivia to Chile, we kind of had that too, but they're building a new one right at the border. I'm excited because I get another stamp from a country I've never been to. Yeah, that's kind of nice, huh? Well, that's good. There's a vehicle there and a flag flying. That means they're hopefully they're up, and uh, up and running, huh? They wouldn't have a flag up if they weren't here. Ready, no, no. Okay, ready. Bitte. So, st stamp here, Bitte. stamp here. Bitte. Bitte. Okay. We're only 10 minutes into this okay. process and we realize we have a okay. serious problem. Okay. Bitte. Bitte. We only have the proper stamps on one of the papers that we need. 
salida. Uh, Falta de la entrada acá. So, they, acá. Filled, they filled out Argentina's form. Se, se te revelaron a ver. O sea, el que está falta acá, quedó allá. Uh, y este queda allá. Down the road. And yeah. not have the you, he'll have we have to surrender one of these copies here and then others right. down the road. Uh, we won't have the necessary ones because only one is stamped. So he takes this one and then no stamp. Okay. Here's the sure. problem too. Okay. So like they filled out the wrong form. So this is the Chilean exit that they filled. They also filmed out the aduana for the look they stamped. Let's see, Republic Chile. So I think it's just the, um, purely the stamps, missing the stamps. Yeah. We are now forced to return all the way back across the river channels to the Chilean side to sort out the paperwork. That changes plans a little bit. <laughs> we just used our buffer days. Yes, we, yes did. we did. Yeah, I think we take Samson, unhook from Samson, okay. and go in Samson. Okay. And then we take three guys. Okay. Yeah. Yep, that works. Roll it out. Just as we're rolling out, Kurt hears the border agent calling him back into the office. Maybe you call them. Oh, got called, so let's see what... What do you say, Kurt? They're going to, uh, they're going to redo the paper with your force on their end. Just stamp everything on their end. Okay. Got a Norby? Clay? The Croft, Edward Aki. Okay, so, yep. This is Samson's. Uh, I'll just leave these for right now. Roll that book. So, is this your paperwork? Yes. Where's your book? Right here. Yeah. Okay, let's just put this back right here then. Great. We're just saying, get out of here. We gave them a few patches in there. They think that's pretty cool, so we're just gonna scoot the trucks and leave before they call us back or something. So, I can say for now, Argentina is very, very welcoming. They did not have to do that for us, and in reality, they stuck their neck out too. Alright guys, just bring it in right on this path. Nice and smooth. Well, it's a good thing we got out of there when we did. Yeah, no kidding. Can you imagine what that water would be like today or even tomorrow morning? They truly helped us, more than they may have known, too, as the rain is setting in and the rivers are rising. Pushing southeast from the mountains, we cross our last river, air up the tires and put in our reserve fuel so we can reach the next main town some 150 miles away. Keep right. going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. Son, you are a dangerous machine. You're just, <laughs> Don't, you're just, do not make me laugh, Kurt. Just, this is well. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so Kurt, where are we headed? Our next destination is El Shaltin. That's the little city near Fitzroy, which is the big famous mountain. Very picturesque very gorgeous must-see mountain in Argentina. Cool, that sounds rad. And even where we're at right now is pretty remote and actually really different from where we were in Chile. Yeah, I mean, Clay and I are in here just uh, marveled how much the topography has changed in just 20 miles, 20, 30 miles. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I think Steve and I are feeling the same way. We even, I think we just saw an emu. We're not, not sure what it was, but it looked like an emu. Over the next 10 days, we will travel through some of the most spectacular locations we have ever seen. So hang tight as we make our way there. The best of the best is yet to come, as long as the weather holds out. <laughs>